Hello everyone, you're watching episode 160... What episode number? Ah, 166 of Let's Flat. My name is Chuck and in the last episode, we were working on this grow light setup that you see behind me. I have this inside my garage and as you can see, I have a tiny selection of plants under the lights and from memory, I think I set it to around 10,000 lux. The idea is to give it something above the amount of lux that you would get on an overcast day but at the same time, much less than direct sunlight and my timer is set to run at 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. That's about 10 hours of sunlight or 10 hours of light. The goal is to give it slightly more light than in winter and an average winter day here would be overcast, rainy, some some days with clear skies so that would be you know your regular sunlight but again there are lots of overcast days which is why i think a constant of 10,000 is more or less enough the other part to this experiment is to see how these plants would react one of the things that i want to find out in this experiment is to see if giving it a constant supply of 10,000 lux would be enough to tide it over during winter and as you can see, I have an array of tiny plants, not necessarily mature, but nowhere near pop size. So they are, I would say they are established forming clumps. And I think some of them are even mature enough to be able to start pushing out additional offsets and even flowers. We'll see. But I think that's my first experiment done. They have been here for two weeks now. It's hard to visually see the differences. So I've been taking lots of photos, one every single day just to be able to compare before and after it would be a lot easier if we do that on my computer so we'll do that later on but right now i want to move on to the next phase of this experiment what i want to do now is to give them a bit more light and to simulate spring or autumn type conditions that would force them to actively grow and i'm hoping that this would give me a lot more insight into growing my seedlings under grow lights so before we start stimulating the plants i'm going to give them a soak now bit of water because I haven't watered them for a few weeks now and being undercover they haven't had access to the rain so before we ramp up our light levels we need to give them a drink now before I start watering them I would like to groom them a bit by removing some of the dried dead leaves underneath and there are even some mushrooms growing so yeah we just need to clean things up and we could start the next phase of the experiment accidentally pulled out the roots but as you can see the root system isn't that deep anyway so I might as well just repot it in a fresh mix. All clean and potted up, it's time for their bath. Also bringing with me a bunch of other tools that might help. Again, this is the lux meter from the last time. This is an infrared thermometer and a bunch of screwdrivers. I would need all of this for when I start fiddling around with the settings again. Of course, screwdrivers so I could adjust the intensity of light from the grow lights. The thermometer is for me to check if the temperatures are just right 
for them to continue growing and lastly the lux meter this is the only way that i have currently to figure out or to measure the intensity of light i do not have a proper power meter those are so expensive man so yeah all right so we're cutting quickly to my computer because i wanted to share with you the results of my first experiment i started the experiment on the 5th of july and the last photo that i took was from yesterday the 19th of july which means that there has exactly been a fortnight or 14 days since then having the photos side by side on my computer makes it a lot easier to compare and i can see that overall there's very little differences between the two in the later photo it looks like they are getting more color the green is less the leaves are starting to curl upwards this means that they are getting more light than before it seems like their activity hasn't massively increased yet i was hoping that they would be more actively growing but i guess i haven't been controlling the temperature as much yet but i imagine that if i increase length of day rather than just increasing the intensity of light this would make it feel a lot more like springtime and maybe i would see increased growth by then i don't really know for sure so i guess it is what it is but the key takeaway here for me is that I am able to manipulate their growing period by having them indoors in grow lights. I just have to wait for a proper tent so I can properly control and maintain the temperature. Yeah. And as for the plants themselves, I'm going to leave them inside this plastic tub because they are still wet and they might drip. And since I only have unsealed, untreated wood right now, it, they might get rotten. So what I'll do is just to spread this apart, just to provide a base. And I'll place this like so, and hopefully arrange them in such a way that there's an equal coverage or at least equal amount of light provided per plant. So I'm going to arrange them in a two by three setup, like so. And let's see what sort of readings we would get. So it looks like the center ones are getting more light at around 14,000. So I'm going to move them out a bit while the side ones more or less on this spot closer to the center. Let's see how that affects things again. So this one we just have around 13,000 just above 13,000 under 13,000 under 13 above 13 above 13 maybe I move this further again and let's see just under 13 or around 13 I think this setup is good enough so the goal there was to have minimal variance between the positions and I think that is acceptable, less than 100 in range. And the next step is to decide how much light I'll be giving them. I think a good starting point for spring-like conditions would be to have a constant supply of 20,000 lux and maybe increase the length of the day from 10 hours to 12 hours. So maybe 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Let's get to work. <laughs> I was just thinking that before I start fiddling around with the power output of my grow lights, maybe I could just make do with increasing the height of the base, bringing the plants closer. Maybe that would be more economical. So let's see if we could achieve 20,000 lux this way. Right now it's at 19,000 lux. Pretty close. Just a bit more and maybe we're golden. So let me look for another riser, another spacer and see how we go with that.
After much fiddling around, this is the setup that I ended up doing and the readings show that they are around 21 to 22,000 lux more or less in the range that I'm looking for so let's go with that so what I want is to represent spring like conditions and in spring we usually get the high teens and somewhere in the low 20s during the day so that's something that I would like to emulate so I think a reading of around 15 or more on this thermometer would work fine because remember this would be a closed setup the garage door would be closed all heat would be coming from the grow lights and there's very little wind coming through with all of these boxes around it so yeah eventually i would end up having a grow tent and the conditions would be more perfect or controlled but right now it's still an open setup and you know there's some limitation to this but without a proper grow tent let's just make do with what we have all right so depending on the location that i measure I get a reading of around 14 to 15 degrees Celsius, so I think that would be enough for my spring-like setup. So I'm going to run this setup for a few more weeks, maybe even a month, and see how the plants react. And after that, I'll be finally moving on to my seedlings. So this will be exciting. Apart from playing around with my grow lights, I've also been working on bits and pieces in the garden. And speaking of bits and pieces, as you can see, I have started working on my winter propagations. Actually, I took these chops just yesterday. Most of them are from yesterday for the past few days. And majority of the cuttings that you see here are Aeonium. So these are Aeonium short black, Aeonium, I think this was emerald carpet, more short black, Aeonium smithii, short black, some Graptopetalum paraguayense, more para Paraguayense, this is Sedum Aurora, Robrotinctum Aurora, and an assortment of other Sedums and Graptopetalums in here.
I know for a fact that my aeoniums are actively growing right now. A lot of them have turned green because this is their ideal growing temperature range. And the reason why I made a lot of cuttings of short blacks is because, for one, this is my favorite aeonium. Secondly, I would like to make a lot more of them. I used to have more in the ground, but after some renovation, I had to let go of some of them. So I placed a couple cuttings in pots, and those cuttings grew into larger plants. And now, they have started to bloom. Let me just show you some of them. And here they are. As you can see, one of them have already bloomed. The other one is just about to start elongating. So, as you can see, I've already chopped out all of the offsets. I didn't have to do that. I could just leave them on and they would be perfectly happy here. But I would like to start working on my clamps sooner rather than later. So, we've got all of these empty spots here. Now, I know what you're thinking. Aeoniums are monocarpic. This will die off. But the thing is, it is the flowering head that dies. This part at the bottom might still live on for several more months, if not a year. It would be dry from here to here. It will slowly shrivel down. Since I have already removed all of the other offsets from the bottom, this means that the only leaves left are from the flowering head itself. And this is the only way for them to create food for the rest of the plant. I could chop off the flowers if I want to, but you know, I enjoy seeing aeonium flowers. They are so cheerful, so so dense and you don't tend to see them all of the time because again they are monocarpic and they only do this once in their lifetime you could say it's a once in a lifetime type of thing so having said that the goal here is to have more offsets grow along the stem probably around some of the cut and even on the main stalk the leaves that are still left here would be sustaining the entire plant until it dries out so hopefully before it does more offsets would come and once those come out i'll be gathering those and i'll be separating them into their own pots or clumps it's basically something for next year's landscape now the reason why i took all of those cuttings is because i want to transform this area into an aeonium garden right now we have a bunch of echeverias senecios graptocidums graptopetalums and all sorts of things here this spot is basically a haven for bushy and clumping types of plants the solitary plants do all right here but compared to the thicker types i think the thick ones do well and in case you're wondering the reason has to do with <laughs> the sunlight that it's getting my back is facing the east and i am facing west so as you can see it gets sunlight from midday all the way until the sun goes down Directly across my planned aeonium area is this area around the fence where I have most of my solitary plants, my Echeveras, my Gibbosora hybrids. It's just that I find that my Echeveras tend to like it better there. They do get sunlight from morning all the way till afternoon, although in the late afternoon the sun gets blocked by the fence and the neighbor's house. So I wouldn't say the whole day. But in any case, from my years of playing around with possessions, they love that area. In that area, they turn really stressed and if I do not get on top of any infestations, they die. So compared to that area just now, I find that my aeoniums do a lot better in this sort of areas where they are receiving a lot of sunlight. They look best during spring and autumn. Right now it's winter, they look all green and just all over the place. So I wouldn't boast of their looks right now. But I can't wait to show you what they would look like once spring and summer comes in. For now, my plan is to have the larger bushy type of aeoniums in the ground. But I'll still have a think about whether I would like to include the smaller types as well. Those that are, you know, things like the Aeonium smithii or the Basamiferum. I think I have the Lindleyi orium. The Haworthia I would also do really well here. I've already got some of them here. I've got some of the Decorum, fairy wings, and I can't remember what this one was. I think this was the Gucci ballerina i've also got some cyclops just off screen here i'll be transplanting them giving them a prominent spot in this area and yeah i've got a bunch more there in the playground let me just show you so as you can see i've got lots more pots with different varieties in here and even more over there i used to have all of these in the ground in different parts of the garden but after doing some renovations a couple of years ago i had to move them into pots some of them we planted back in the ground just to make more space and to think that that used to be just one cutting that I stuck in the ground. Now, it's this entire bush. It's even taller than my kids. <laughs> so with that said, that's going to be my project over the next few weeks or even months. 
all the way until spring. There's a lot of tidying up that has to happen here and I don't know, a lot of this would be going to the bin because I don't think I'll be able to sell all of them right away. Apart from that, I'm so happy to report that the Semper Vivums are doing really well in the Philippines. And hopefully within the next few weeks or months, they start spreading out just in time for spring. Because once summer hits, they are going to be dormant and they would not be able to further establish themselves. Hopefully, the Echeveria would recover from all of their winter-related damage and they would fill up the area again, fill up the canopy and protect the Semper Vivums during summer. I'm half expecting this to be a millibug fest so we'll see how much control I'll be able to maintain during the entire process. Apart from that, I would very much like to continue working on my Aeon new propagation so I'll go gather the plants and let's get offsets. So what I'll do is to take some cuttings off of these plants leaving a bunch of leafy parts on just so the main plant still thrives I think I'll get a fair amount of them maybe half or a third because there's a lot of them to go through this clump is so thick I don't want to make everything so bare but I'll take a good number from the middle because that's where the most vigorous parts are usually located and maybe some off of the sides <laughs> Alright, I think I'm happy with that amount and I'll put this back where it came from. I'm going to do the same for the rest of these plants and I'll be back. So I've ended up chopping a lot more heads from my other Aeoniums. And as you can see, there's a lot of them to go around. So I might be moving them into small planters or small, small pots. I'm going to leave them isolated for now, maybe for a few weeks until they start growing roots. And the main reason is that, like Semper Vivums, Aeoniums are melee magnets as well. Fortunately for me, Aeoniums are more resilient to the damage done by melee, so they do not tend to die as easily as the Echeveria. But with that in mind, I'm going to keep them away from my Echeveria plants because those ones, they tend to be more susceptible to melee-related diseases. So I'm going to place this under the eaves because it's going to rain really soon. As you can see, it's getting pretty dark out here. Let's go somewhere protected. So here we are undercover under relative protection under the eaves. And I've got a tray of the cuttings that I just took just now. I've prepared another tray because what I'll be doing next is to place them under, or rather place them upside down, exposing the cut surface. This is just a personal preference because I want the cut surface to be more exposed to the open air and hopefully that would speed up the callusing process because as you know, the cuts or the wounds on the plant is one of the ways that they can get into the plant. So if you water them now, the water would allow them, allow these microbes to go where they want to go and that is inside the plant. So if I give them a week, or more depending on how soon they start growing roots but basically I'm just going to keep them here where it is dry and away from the rest of the garden because there might be some fungal infestation happening I don't know but yeah I'll, I'll be keeping them in this protected spot away from the rain hopefully in a couple of weeks or in just a week since it's their growing season they would start growing roots and I'll be able to use them in some of my landscapes in my Aeonium based landscapes as for the landscape itself I'm not sure what other plants I'll be placing in there all I know is I want an Aeonium dedicated area but part of me wants to play with some Sinesios and even some of the Kailanchoes I'm just, I'm just not sure I have enough of them or enough of the types that I want to play with. If I don't have any, then I'll just go with some of the Graptos to add more color into the landscapes. So let me just finish this and I'll be back. Now, speaking of the next steps of the propagation, unlike the Aeoniums, the Sedums, the Graptos, and stuff in between that you see here, they do not have the same growing temperature range as the Aeoniums. The Aeoniums tend to like it cooler 
but they tend to be somewhere in the middle, somewhere in between. I would imagine that if I would quantify the temperature range, it would be somewhere between 15 to 25. That would be the bit where they are most active. So unfortunately, that means for me right now in winter, they would not grow as much. In fact, I think they would not start growing roots until much later towards the end of winter. However, we are over the halfway mark of winter and we have just about a month left and August would be the final month of winter, which means that it's not too long before the temperatures start rising again and the days get longer. In fact, our sunset now is happening at maybe 5.30, close to 6, where just last month or even last week, our sunsets happen at 5. So yeah, we are definitely feeling it. We are over the solstice already. But yeah, as I was saying, these things, they tend to grow at a higher temperature range, so I would not expect them to grow roots anytime soon, and I'll be keeping them under cover until then. As for the aeoniums, as soon as I see them growing roots, I might move them to the ground or in pots depending on whether the aeonium area is ready or not yet. As for planting, as you can see, aeoniums have thick stems, so it would not be advisable to just plant them directly unless your soil is pretty dry. In my case, winter is pretty wet here in Australia, in Melbourne. So I'm going to just be on the safe side and let this calves completely, maybe at least a week or at least until they start growing roots. That way I am pretty sure that they are ready for planting. There are more plants that I would like to chop today, but unfortunately the skies are getting so dark now and we are expecting some showers or rain tonight all the way until tomorrow and even maybe a few more days later in the week. And speaking of rains, as I have noted in my community post on YouTube and on my announcement on Facebook, it has been raining a lot here and between that and some stuff going on at work. The episodes right now are going to come out really slow, maybe once every two weeks on average because there's just lots of things for me to work on at the moment. But rest assured, in the near future, I'll be having a lot more free time to work on my hobbies and Hopefully that means a lot more videos for you guys. Yeah, it's starting to shower now. I think I have to move my camera undercover. So what was I saying? Oh yeah, because of this pandemic, a lot of people are now turning to their hobbies, gardening, cooking and stuff. And because of that, I'm happy to see an uptick in the number of viewers watching. I'd like to take this chance to say hi to my new subscribers. And also I was just looking at my analytics and there's something that I find really odd that we need to fix and that is this so right now we are just under 22,000 subscribers and out of all of the views that i got from the past month 15.7 percent are from subscribers and the remaining 84.7 percent are not subscribed so what are you doing guys it would be amazing if at least a third or even just a fourth of all of those views came from subscribers. So let me remind you to please subscribe to my channel because I keep rolling out content like this and hit the notification bell if you do not want to miss out on anything. I'll be trying something new in the next few videos that I'll be putting out because another reason for my inactivity in this channel was that I was working on live streams with a few friends. And normally I could just share or upload those live streams on my channel, but the problem is that the language used wasn't purely English, so a lot of you wouldn't understand what we were talking about. It was mixed Filipino and English. So I was thinking that maybe I could record myself just presenting the presentation that I presented. That's a lot of present. During those live streams and, you know, just hosting them on my channel. That way, you wouldn't have missed out on any of those. But in closing, I would like to thank all of you for your support. The viewership has been amazing and you guys are amazing. And of course, special thanks to all of my Patreon patrons and those who have joined me as sponsors right here on YouTube. That means a lot because with the pandemic and stuff, things are getting a lot harder for everyone. So every little contribution you're sharing is very much appreciated. So with all of that said, I'll see you in the next video, episode, wherever. I'm not sure when. Hopefully I could bring out those lecture type videos pretty soon because at least I could just record them indoors. But otherwise, I'll see you when I see you. Bye.